in today's class we will discuss um, both geometrical and algebraic methods to calculate angular momentum so for simplicity we will consider uh, the motion on the xy plane okay a particle is moving on the xy plane let us assume that uh, the plane of this board is uh, xy plane and then uh, we know that uh, angular momentum vector will lie along um, it's perpendicular to the plane of motion right if the plane of motion is xy plane angular momentum vector will be along the z axis okay so let me uh, uh, draw this this is x axis okay so this is our xy plane um, <clears throat> let's say a particle is situated here so this is the position vector and uh, let's say the, the, the linear momentum of the particle is along this direction okay so this is vector p and uh, this is the direction of the position vector r and the angle between the position vector r the direction of the position vector r and the vector p let us call it take it as phi okay so um, what is uh, the set component of angular momentum the general equation for angular momentum from the previous class we know that vector l is equal to vector r cross vector p okay so what is the z component of angular momentum here the angular momentum is lying along the z direction right so the z component of r cross p okay so we need to take the magnitude we know that the angular momentum is lying along the z axis um, so what is the is it plus z direction or minus z direction uh, so that for that we have to apply the right hand rule um, so let's keep the our the 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 forefinger of the right hand along the position vector r and uh, turn the other fingers to the momentum vector p okay then the thumb is in the direction of plus z direction plus z axis towards you so again uh, see that uh, the the rotation from r to p okay the way the the fingers curl is um, anti clockwise right so the, the rotation is in the counterclockwise or anti clockwise sense so then the angular momentum vector is towards you plus the direction so the direction is towards you let us look at the magnitude so okay so what is the magnitude uh, this is r magnitude of uh, vector r let me take as simply r similarly magnitude of vector p let me take as p into sine of the angle between r and p and the angle between r and p is from the figure is sine phi so l z is r p sine phi okay let us uh, try to understand this uh, more so first what i am going to do is um, <coughs> let us kind of consider the perpendicular distance from the origin to the the, the linear momentum vector p so if i uh, drop a perpendicular from the origin to the linear momentum vector so this is the perpendicular right okay this is perpendicular to momentum p so let me uh, simply call take it as r perpendicular okay it's a perpendicular distance from the origin uh, to this point so let us try to calculate r perpendicular in terms of the position vector r okay so if this angle uh, is phi what about this angle this inner angle okay this inner angle is pi minus phi right this in, that is pi minus phi so what is r perpendicular r perpendicular is from the the right angle triangle uh, the hypotenuse is the 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 position vector the magnitude of the position vector r right look at here see here uh, this is the this is the hypotenuse of uh, this right angle triangle okay 
and the hypotenuse is the magnitude of the position vector r okay so therefore this uh, distance is r sin pi minus phi if you in this triangle triangle if you take sin pi minus phi its opposite side r perpendicular divided by this side r okay so if you cross multiply what you get is r perpendicular is um, so this is r sin pi minus phi but what is sin pi minus phi sin pi minus phi is nothing but sin phi right so r perpendicular is r sin phi so if we go back to the equation of l set okay uh, this uh, we can rewrite as r sin phi i can combine as r perpendicular r perpendicular into p so here let me write it down here l set is uh, r perpendicular into p so to get the magnitude of uh, angular momentum vector what we have to do um, we have to take the perpendicular distance from the origin uh, to the linear momentum vector and the magnitude of angular momentum will be the linear uh, perpendicular distance from the origin into linear momentum vector that is r perpendicular into p okay so that is a geometrical way to look at uh, uh, angular momentum vector and again the same uh, uh, motion the same figure we can look at in look at from another point of view again let me redraw this okay so this is the position of the particle this is r this is the direction of r and uh, this is the direction of P. Okay. And uh, this angle is phi. Now here what now I am what I am going to do is I am um, dropping a perpendicular uh, from the linear momentum vector to the position vector. Okay. So let like this. Okay. So this is a perpendicular from the linear momentum vector to the um, position vector. So let us call it P perpendicular. Okay, again this angle, this inner angle is pi minus phi. Now what you see is that, um, again if you look at this, uh, um, this right angle triangle, okay. So I'll consider this right angle triangle. Uh, here now what the hypotenuse is uh, the momentum magnitude of the momentum vector P. So this side opposite side P perpendicular will be P sine pi minus phi. Okay. So I can write P perpendicular is equal to magnitude of P sine pi minus phi. Again, you know that pi minus phi is uh, sine pi minus phi is sine phi. So p perpendicular is equal to p sine phi. Now let us go back to the earlier equation that uh, we have written uh, here. L set is equal to r p sine phi. Now earlier we combined r sine phi as r perpendicular. Now let us look at this uh, in this way. P sine phi is p perpendicular, right? So we can write L set as R into P perpendicular. Okay. So we have three equations here. L set I can write as R P sine phi. Equation one. I can also write it as uh, R perpendicular into P perpendicular distance from the origin into magnitude of momentum and I can also write this as uh, R into P perpendicular position magnitude of position vector into perpendicular um, component of uh, momentum so here in this expression uh, this uh, figure I can write L set is R P perpendicular okay so this is a uh, 
two different um, in, in two different geometrical ways of looking at uh, angular momentum vector okay now uh, we will um, okay we will have uh, another way of uh, uh, combining uh, we will show that uh, the algebraic way of calculating angular momentum uh, is the same as uh, equal to the geometrical way of calculating it. So for that, uh, again, we will consider motion along the xy plane. Okay, so what uh, I am going to do is, first I will consider a motion of a particle in the y direction and in the x direction separately. Okay, and then let us consider the combined motion in the xy plane. Okay, so, um, okay. so this is the situation. Um, so let us say we have a particle here okay and uh, it is moving so uh, let us say it is a position vector is R here particle is here and uh, it is moving along the this direction let us say this is the momentum P of the particle. Okay, we want to write down an expression for um, angular momentum vector. Okay. So um, before doing that, so what I am first uh, going to do is uh, let us uh, resolve this. We can resolve this uh, momentum into an x component and y component. Okay. So. This is the x component, let me call it px, and uh, this is the y component. Okay, let us call it p. So, um, and we can also resolve this r into, uh, let us say, this is x coordinate. Of the point right and uh, this is the y coordinate of the point this is x-axis and y-axis so what I am going to do is um, before looking at this combined motion I will look at uh, the, the y component first and I will look at the x component then and let's try to come back to this uh, equation a little later so first let us look at uh, the motion along the y direction okay so let us draw this figure again here x y okay uh, this is the position of the particle right okay and let's consider the motion along only the y direction now let's look at the y component now this is the y component py and um, so we know that uh, angular momentum vector is um, mm, along the set direction so from the earlier discussion we can We can write an expression for LZ. Okay, so we know that LZ is equal to um, R perpendicular into P, right? Perpendicular distance from the origin um, into the magnitude of the momentum. So what is the perpendicular distance from the origin? The origin is uh, at this point, right? This is the origin. So what is the perpendicular distance from the origin to the um, uh, the, the momentum vector? So in order to find that, let us extend this momentum vector. So the perpendicular distance from the origin to the momentum vector is simply x, the x coordinate of this uh, uh, position of the particle here. Okay. So how do we? Um, uh, and uh, now the next question is, uh, uh, so this is uh, magnitude is r perpendicular into p, fine. But uh, what is the direction? Okay. In order to get the direction, um, we should know. Um, we should use the practice. Uh, See, um, 
extend the fingers uh, place your thumb um, right hand at the position of the origin and extend the uh, the forefinger um, to the position of the particle along the direction of uh, vector r and then uh, uh, you rotate the other fingers from r to p r to p so when you rotate this rotate rotation is uh, if you try this you can see that this rotation is uh, counter clockwise sense like this this is the sense of rotation um, from um, the the direction of the position vector to um, the momentum okay the counter clock it's the rotation is in the counter clockwise sense so if the rotation is in the counter clockwise sense the angular momentum vector is towards you towards you means along the plus z direction okay so we can write uh, l z as l z as r perpendicular is the perpendicular distance to the momentum uh, vector is x and uh, what is the uh, magnitude of the momentum p y x p y so l z is simply x p y and uh, in this discussion one more point is clear here our particle when you look at the motion of the particle the particle is moving along a straight line along the y direction okay look at this figure so this second figure particle is moving along a straight line along the y direction but still it has an angular momentum lz is xpy angular momentum with respect to this origin this origin so this point is that even uh, what we have to understand is that even a particle moving along a straight line can have angular momentum because angular momentum uh, does not merely depend on the state of motion it also depends on the, uh, the, the position vector remember with respect to it means that it, it is uh, depending on uh, the coordinate system and uh, it depends on the origin about which you are measuring the angular momentum. That's why we, uh, the position vector is important. So here we are measuring the angular momentum. We are calculating the angular momentum of this body moving along, particle moving along a straight line with respect to this origin. So with respect to this origin, this particle has an angular momentum. If you change the origin, if you take some other, uh, try to calculate the angular momentum with respect to some other point, let us say with respect to this point here. Okay. Uh, the ang uh, when if you try to calculate this uh, with, with respect to this point okay uh, then uh, angular momentum will be zero because uh, when you draw right uh, take the perpendicular distance from here to here the perpendicular distance is zero okay so angular momentum vector will be so in other words uh, when you draw a position vector from this point to the position of the particle the angle between the position vector and the linear momentum vector is zero so so it depends uh, on the position vector also, not simply on the value of the momentum. So keep this point in mind, even a body moving along a straight line can have angular momentum. Okay, so now we have considered motion along the y direction. Let us come uh, consider now the motion along the z direction. Okay. Again, I am considering the position of the particle here. This time, the particle is moving along x direction. P x. I want to calculate the angular momentum with respect to this origin. So for that, uh, again, I am using, uh, I, I know that uh, LZ is along um, Z direction. So it is R perpendicular into P, but uh, okay. So uh, first, uh, let us, uh, what? let us look at the direction of uh, the angular momentum vector <clears throat> it is along the z direction but whether it is plus z or minus z again what you have to do is uh, uh, you draw the imagine the consider the origin you place your thumb here okay extend and you know that this is the position vector i've come back to the uh, original expression uh, figure this is the direction of the position vector okay and uh, what is the direction of the angular momentum vector uh, angular momentum vector is along the uh, along this along the uh, this direction so position vector is along this direction so you place the thumb here at the origin extend uh, your thumb uh, the forefinger to this position of the particle okay and then uh, ex curl the other fingers to the direction of angular momentum vector which is along the x direction 
so the, what is the direction of the thumb you can see that the curling the rotation from the position vector to the angular momentum vector this rotation direction is clockwise sense okay it is in this sense clockwise then the thumb will be pointing along minus z direction okay so the angular momentum vector is in minus z direction we can write lz is equal to minus r perpendicular into p the magnitude only comes from r perpendicular into p the direction has to come from um, the the right hand row so what is this r perpendicular into p again so what is a perpendicular distance from the origin to the angular the, the the linear momentum so for that you extend the linear momentum vector like this now the perpendicular distance from the origin to the linear momentum vector is simply the y axis of the point p okay so y y coordinate so l z is equal to minus y px okay so we have considered the motion along the y direction uh, separately and here the z component of angular momentum is xpy the angular momentum vector is along the plus z direction so its sign is positive when you consider the motion along the x direction again you see that uh, above particle moving along a straight line has an angular momentum with respect to this origin that depends upon where the origin is in other words that depends upon the position vector or perpendicular distance from the origin if there is a perpendicular distance from the origin uh, to the um, the line of the linear momentum vector then definitely there is an angular momentum so this particle moving along a this particle moving along a straight line along the x direction definitely it has an angular momentum because there is a perpendicular distance from the origin and what is that uh, the direction of this rotation from uh, the position vector to the the uh, the linear momentum vector it is sense of rotation is clockwise so the thumb or the points away from us or the angular momentum vector is along the minus z direction so that's why i put a minus sign here so lz is minus r perpendicular to p whereas this r perpendicular now is uh, y see the perpendicular distance from the origin to the direction of linear momentum vector is y so it is minus y px right now let's come back to our uh, general uh, motion along the general direction so it has uh, the x component it has uh, the y component we have considered the y component and x component separately so what is the angular momentum um, magnitude of angular momentum uh, for this motion along the general direction okay we simply combine the earlier two cases for motion along the y direction the angular momentum is xpy for motion along the x direction the angular momentum is minus ypx so just uh, xpy plus minus ypx so the angular momentum component is uh, set direct set component is xpy minus ypx so the, here we have looked at it geometrically okay now let us consider the algebraic way of calculating angular momentum so what is the algebraic method okay algebraic method is simply um, how to calculate the cross product algebraically so we know that um, l is equal to r cross p so how do you calculate uh, r cross p using algebraic method and uh, we know the equation for a, r pro, a cross b right and we also know that it can be expressed as a determinant so we write it as a determinant first row is uh, i j k second row is the component of uh, the first vector that is r which is x y and z and third row is uh, the component of the second vector the momentum vector so px py and uh, okay sorry uh, so here the motion is only along the x xy plane so there is no y component for uh, linear momentum vector and also there is no y component for a position vector so we will okay so what is the y component z com uh, there is no z component there is no z component of for the position vector and there is no z component for the um, linear momentum vector okay only x and y components are there so this is how we uh, expand it so when you uh, expand it what do you get 
so i into we get zero j j vector also we get zero the only thing remaining is k vector and uh, what you get x p y minus y p x so what does it show the angular momentum vector is um, along uh, plus z direction the resultant angular momentum vector is along the plus z direction and uh, the, this this case shows that the the position vector k uh, shows that uh, the resultant angular momentum vector is along the plus z direction and uh, the magnitude of this angular momentum will be x p y minus y p x okay and uh, okay so this is that we we have we get from the algebraic method and uh, if you come go back to the geometrical way of obtaining this uh, x p y minus y p x how do we be, how, how did we get that we looked at the motion separately along uh, motion along the y direction contributes x p y motion along the z x direction contributes minus y p x okay so we can see that uh, both the algebraic method of calculating angular momentum and uh, the geometrical method of calculating angular momentum yields the same value, right? So um, from this we can conclude that, uh, from this algebraic result we can conclude that the z component of uh, angular momentum vector is x p y minus y p x. So both approach approaches give the same result. Okay, so now we can stop here. Uh, we will look at some examples of uh, some problems in the next class. Thank you.